people have started asking me exactly what I believe and recently well not that recently actually I did a video on UFOs and somebody asked me the question in one of the comments um, how do you know UFOs exist and I have to hold up my hands here to say that yes I've seen one and this was in around about well, it would have been October 2003 so about this time of year it was in the evening and I used to live at the time in a little place called Barnt Green which is sort of South Birmingham and I used to use the M42 a lot because coming out of Barnt Green about the only way you can get anywhere worth going is to go down the M42 unless you're going to the centre of Birmingham of course anyhow it was quite a nice evening and I was driving up the M42 and I went past this field and I found the exact place on Google Earth where this happened well Google Maps and it's just off the motorway there's a field with trees on both sides and a fence and what actually happened was I pulled over onto the hard shoulder because as I was going past at 70 miles an hour out of the corner of my eye remember it was mostly quite it was quite dark it was you could sort of see things by the glow of the city and and all that sort of stuff behind it because in the distance there you have got one of the Birmingham suburbs and I'd seen something odd and it was big and odd <laughs> it was enough to make me stop and I pulled in onto the hard shoulder and behind me on the hard shoulder there was a buff coloured um, Ford Fiesta with nobody in it and I didn't think much about that um, it's a bit odd that no one was in it I thought maybe the driver had gone to relieve himself or something and so I got out and I walked back along the hard shoulder a little bit and what did I see? well what I saw was a big boomerang shaped craft that was hovering off the ground now this is I've drawn it roughly about where it was and at the time my car would have been here the Ford Fiesta about level with the nose of the craft and I walk back along because you can't see a lot through these trees along here so I walk back and as soon as I rounded the corner my jaw dropped open because that's what I saw now this isn't a photograph obviously what I've done is I've just taken the street view image and I've added my own sketch of the UFO which isn't quite right um, now what's not quite right about it is the outside of the craft the edges of the craft had a very blurry shape and at first I thought it was vibrating about you know maybe moving an inch or two in every direction but in actual fact when I got a bit closer I did walk right the way up to the fence so I guess I was about 30 feet away or so from the nose when I got closer I saw that wasn't what was going on at all now that when I say this craft was big I mean we're talking around about the size of a jumbo jet maybe slightly bigger certainly a lot deeper and I made a couple of sketches later in the evening which I'm going to show you and here's the first sketch this sort of shows the scale of the UFO next to this Ford that was parked there, trucks passing on the highway it was big and you've got the trees around it ok they're not that size but my mind was playing tricks on me at the time <laughs> that's my excuse anyway I was a bit shocked and when I was close I saw you see you've got this sort of blurry effect around the edge and I was thinking what the hell is that and when I got closer I could actually see what it was now this thing just looked like a black cutout it was reflecting no light producing no light 
Even when the cars were going past with their headlamps on, the light would shine on everything else around it, but the actual craft itself stayed dark. And I've left this portion of it unshaded in so you can see the rough shape of it. And it had these areas on the bottom which were glossy. And that was a contrast with the rest of it because the rest of it was covered with Christmas trees. Now, when I say Christmas trees, that's kind of what they look like, a kid's drawing of a conifer like this, about 11 centimetres, just short of a foot tall, and in two different sizes. And they were in a regular array like this, so you'd have six big ones, and then you'd have six small ones around, them, around a central big one. And they overlapped a little bit. It's very difficult to draw. You'll have to excuse my drawing. I'm not the best in the world at drawing. I can paint, but my drawing is not so good. And each of these had seven points on. And it goes beyond that because each of these cones was covered with the same pattern of even tinier cones. So it was kind of a fractal pattern. And Lord knows how deep this went. I mean, for all I know, these tiny cones had tinier cones on top of them and so on, all the way down. And I did have some things, thoughts about that later. So, I got as close as I was going to get to it, which was about where this Ford Fiesta was, near the nose. And I looked around to see if the guy in the Ford Fiesta was there, and he wasn't. I went right the way up to the fence. Practically as soon as I got to the fence, it went. And when I say went, it was like a soap bubble that someone had pricked. Now, I don't know if you've ever had that sensation, if you've ever seen a really big soap bu bubble burst. Now, down in Covent Garden in London, they have street performers. Um, um, some of the street performers can actually put themselves inside a soap bubble. And when that pricks, there's no noise, but you can kind of feel a change in the air for, for whatever reason. You kind of feel it more than hear it. And that's exactly what this was like. It was like someone had popped a huge soap bubble. And then I thought, well, I started questioning my sanity, as you do in these situations. I thought, did I really see what I just saw? And it was the recollection of all the details that really said, yeah, I did see this. And when I looked up, I could see way up in the sky. I mean, we're talking maybe 800 to 1,000 feet up, I guess, judging by the size of it. I could see this thing, and it was hovering there. And now these areas which are underneath which were previously just black and glossy, were glowing slightly, and it was a, a blue-white shade. And this is just a little sketch map I made of myself, myself at the time, showing fences, the hard shoulder, where the Ford Fiesta was, and uh, the rough sort of position and arrangement of the craft. Now, it wasn't until I lifted up that I, it lifted off, and it was, it was up there, and that's why well, it didn't lift off, it just disappeared and reappeared up in the sky. It wasn't until then that I realised that it had this kind of diamond shaped thing in the middle and it didn't have any body as such, it was just like a wing shape and two struts supporting this kind of kite shaped thing in the middle um, which obviously was three dimensional. If I go back to my other sketch you can see that, that was this bit that stuck down here and I didn't know that at the time, I thought it, it must have had kind of a body but because this thing just looked like a black cut out hanging against the sky. Uh, well, no, obviously not. It uh, was some kind of pod that was supported in the middle of the cut out between the two. I won't call them wings. Because one of the first thoughts I had when I saw it was covered with these things, I thought, well, how does that work aerodynamically? But of course, after it kind of vanished, I realised that, well, it doesn't need to. I mean, that thing 
would have all the aerodynamics of a brick anyway. It uh, would be absolutely useless if you just sort of glided it through the air, it would just fall out of the sky. So I scratched my head for a bit afterwards and kind of thought about it and a year or two later I saw an article in uh, one of the electronics magazines um, and a professional magazine and it was talking about Russian fractal antenna and they were exactly like this well they weren't cones or anything but basically you had the antenna shape and then a smaller version repeated and a smaller one on top of that and I was wondering if that had anything to do with the way that it propelled itself because when it was up there um, it sort of hung in the sky for maybe well I was observing it for two or three seconds and then whoosh it went again it just popped again and this time I couldn't see where it went so it obviously went a longer distance and I kind of thought to myself well mm, how does it do that and I suddenly realised there was no bang or anything so it had to have moved the air from where it appeared up there and somehow swapped that air with itself that's the only thing that makes sense otherwise there'd be a bang and the kind of soap bubble disturbance I felt was down to the fact that it was swapping air from 500 feet higher up which is a different temperature and a different density therefore it would have caused a big disturbance and that's obviously well not a big disturbance a small disturbance and that's actually what I felt and then I thought well it must have not wanted to kill me because let's say it decided it wanted to get out of there in a hurry and it was capable of disappearing and reappearing practically anywhere then it could very well have disappeared off into space and there'd have been a big hole in the world where it used to be and all the air would have wanted to rush in it would have knocked me off my feet and possibly pulled the fence down and disturbed a few cars but obviously for whatever reason it didn't want to do that and obviously I went home scratched my head I've told a few people that I have seen a UFO I haven't gone into big details about it but the more I think about this kind of fractal cone arrangement the more it makes sense I mean that's why this thing I mean everything was black so that's why this thing could so successfully not reflect any light because these things are light traps I mean if the light gets in it's just going to bounce around until it decays until it all gets absorbed and the same would happen to radar talk about a stealth coating eh? I mean this is like a deep 3D stealth coating it would make it invisible to practically anything any wavelength of electromagnetic radiation would get absorbed possibly where it's a fractal nature even up to the terahertz range which is a thought so there we go that is my UFO sighting and I was lucky enough to come across a clip on the internet a while ago of what looked to be a very very similar craft that someone had watched through their night vision goggles um, and seen in the States and it looks for all the world like this one except it seems to move like an aircraft and I'm wondering if all it's doing is simply repeated jumps very small jumps to go slowly so maybe it jumps six inches a few times a second or whatever who knows what the capabilities of this thing are so that's my big UFO confession out of the way yes I do believe in UFOs I don't think this was made by humans because it was just too weird so there we are well if you like this please watch the little bit of video at the end um, 
I've managed to find that um, night vision goggle video and I'm going to stick it on the back of this. Have fun. Please like and subscribe as I always say. Thank you very much. Bye.